behind me, right over there, is the Francis Costigan House, right here near the corners of Vine and Third in downtown Madison. And we're about to embark on a special little tour of this 1850s style house. This is an architect's architecture because the man, Costigan, was an architect to behold. And this is where he lived. And when people visited him, they would show what he could do with a 22 foot wide city block. Let's check that out. Welcome to 408 West Third Street, the Francis Costigan House, property of Historic Madison Incorporated. Francis Costigan was a 19th century architect and builder, uh, probably Indiana's premier early 19th century architect and builder. Came from Baltimore, Maryland, uh, where he trained. Uh, built a lot of big, beautiful buildings here in Madison, including the Lanier Mansion, the Shrewsbury Mansion, and some big buildings that are no longer with us, the uh, Woodburn Mansion and the Madison Hotel, uh, rumored to be the finest hotel in the West. The um, architecture that Costigan built in mostly here in Madison is Greek Revival. It's a very stoic, uh, very permanent, very solid type of architecture that really appealed to those first generation uh, Americans, men like Costigan and Lanier, who, whose parents were born English, but they were born American. And they were very conscious of the fact that they were setting the cornerstone for what would be American. So within the architecture uh, limitations of Greek Revival, uh, Francis Costigan was able to build a wide variety of really interesting houses. Duplexes, common man houses, uh, the JFD Lanier Mansion, which is a wonderful representation of his personality. Uh, the Shrewsbury Mansion, which was much more fun-loving and better represented the uh, personality of the Shrewsbury family. And this house, which is uh, a lot of fun in its own right. Uh, it's the house that he built, the last house he built here in Madison. The front of the house isn't very elaborate. Uh, except perhaps for the front portico with columns designed on the drawings of the Temple of the Winds and all sorts of wonderful cast plaster uh, decorative work. Uh, but once you step inside, it becomes much more elaborate. One of the first interesting features we see is a sliding pocket door. Hello, welcome to the Costigan Parlor. As you'll notice, you've come in through the corner of the room. This is one of Costigan's tricks to make the room seem larger, seeing as he's on such a small plot. You'll also notice that the door that you entered through is a 12 foot tall curved door. This in its own is a feat, and it also is part of a larger curved wall. This being the formal parlor of the house would be where Costigan brings his friends and potential clients in. So this is a showcase of his work. You have things such as the lamb's tongue molding in the top. You have the fact that he is trying to imitate the look of a double parlor in a much smaller area. So we have the two sets of reflecting um, living room type settings. The gasolier in this room is actually original to the house. The carpet in this room was woven in England and came in in 24 inch strips that had to be hand sewn together and then stretched wall to wall. The wallpaper in this room is taken from another home here in Madison and we sent it off and had it reproduced for this room. This next room is the dining room. Now you'll notice again the wallpaper. It's a historically accurate for the time period wallpaper. It is hand blocked reproduction and if you look closely when the light hits it just right you can see that there's a little bit of shimmer on the green parts of the pineapple. The gas lights that they had were known to flicker and so during dinner parties from the gas lights it would cause this to shimmer and cause slight movement as if the leaves were moving in the breeze. This valance for the window curtains, we believe, could possibly be original to the house. And then if you go over here, you'll see the staircase. This staircase also is at the immediate entrance, and it goes up both sides and shares the same landing at the top. And this was used in, a, in order to save room and for them to be able to go to either side of the house that they needed to go to. 
As a guest to the Costigan house, you would have seen the front parlor and the dining room, but you probably wouldn't have got a look behind the scenes, but we can do that, so let's go on upstairs. One of the unique features about this house, since the staircase comes up from both directions, it has a swinging gate to keep you from accidentally stumbling and falling down the other side. One of the first things you notice about the upstairs hall is the ashlar blocked wallpaper. Again, this is a hand blocked wallpaper. Ashlar block patterns were very common in the 1840s and 50s, especially for hallways and stairwells. Uh, the carpet in here is a Venetian. Uh, it's not nearly as expensive and fancy as the ones downstairs. Uh, it's made on a loom, uh, probably made here in America, but again, sewn together and stretched wall to wall, and would have been a very typical floor covering here in Madison. This is the master bedroom. This room uh, is like the others. It's full of fun things. We have curved walls. We have closets. Uh, most of the houses in Madison in the 19th century, early 19th century, didn't have closets. But uh, a lot of Costigan's designs are just packed full of nice closets, although they're not necessarily roomy by our standards. This is another closet in the master bedroom. A unique feature about this closet is that it has its own window. The closet itself didn't need a window, but uh, to provide the necessary symmetry from the outside, you had to have two windows up here. So one is in the bedroom and the other is in here. Every room would have had its own fireplaces. Uh, the fireplaces burned coal for heat. Um, and again, very typical here in Madison. Uh, Madison would have been a smoky city back in the 19th century with all of the houses heating with coal, all the factories co burning coal. A uh, much more crowded and smoky environment than we tend to think of with Madison. This room we have set up for the children. It would have been uh, uh, two boys and two girls all together. One of the little girls did not survive uh, to go to Indianapolis with the rest of the family. But again, even in this room, the, it has a closet for the kids uh, that just is so unusual for the 19th century to have this many closets. The only uh, source of light in this room uh, would have been the, the gas sconce. The house has gas very early on in Madison. The whole point of this story was the double parlor and maybe the dining room. The room's up here almost an afterthought. And this is Francis Costigan's study, complete with a drawing desk and a work table, uh, two gas lamps over top of the desk so he can see better, and a little bitty fireplace off to the side to provide some heat. And this is Francis Costigan's signature. It's the only one known. We think this was probably um, Mrs. Costigan's day room or boudoir. So as the husband was out making the living, the wife was home actually running a small business of her own. And the day room or boudoir probably should, instead of having a little bed to take a nap on, should probably have a desk with ledgers and papers. This room, however, is uh, uh, dedicated to the other buildings that Costigan built, as well as uh, more detailed information about the restoration of, of this house. After investigation of uh, ghost marks on the floor and uh, detailed paint analysis and uh, a lot of investigation, uh, we received an anonymous grant to fund the restoration of the house. And with that money, we were able to reproduce wallpapers, reproduce carpets, uh, recreate the paint finishes, and put it back just as close as possible to the way it looked when Francis Costigan and his family uh, lived here. That was our tour of the Francis Costigan house. Uh, Francis Costigan left Madison in 1851 after being here for about 15 years. He went to Indianapolis, he worked for another 15 years, built a lot of big, beautiful buildings. 
Uh, but remember, if you want to see his buildings today, you can't do that in Indianapolis. You have to come to Madison, Indiana to see them. Thanks again for stepping back in time with me, Jeremy Sage, here in historic downtown Madison and on WKMNews.com, the voice and the history of Kentuckiana.